My name is David Beckett, and um, I'm not sure what I do anymore. <laughs> Last year, almost on a daily basis, doing <clears throat> cool drawings in the in a cafe, and kind of getting more interesting and and better as the time time went as the months passed. Now I did I sold one drawing to a couple that got up to leave, and I showed them the little drawing that I did, and they were tiny little faces a guy and a woman in a group of about five people or whatever and they they loved it even though it was just a suggestion of them a little pencil drawing they said how much we want it for 32 years I was a portrait photographer and always kind of thought that I would be a portrait photographer but I do consider myself to be pretty lucky. I mean, we're all, you know, a lot of us are so lucky. And, um, I certainly enjoy painting and, and drawing, and I've done a lot of that. At one point, I may have resented the coming of the digital age and the technology. Years later, now that we're fully engaged in it, I, I think uh, it's the way the world has gone and, uh, and I accept it. I, you know, I'd have to say it was a slow, a slow death. And so I, I kind of, it wasn't just night and day, it was, it, I was getting used to the fact that the phone was ringing here, you know, less and less. And shoots were kind of getting rare the last couple of years. And, you know, I moved out of my last studio, I guess around three years ago. It was the great unknown, mind you, but there was a certain amount of relief as well, because, it was just, it kind of had ended for me a number of years ago. Even though it can be a, possibly a slightly harsher path in many ways, because it's hard to turn art into money sometimes. But I feel kind of blessed, actually, that uh, that I see things from an artistic eye because um, it's special and I'm aware that it is special. So now is uh, yet another chapter and we'll see where we go from here. That's the drawing I did, that middle one. Making artwork, painting, for example, um, it's, it can be a very odd, maybe that's why I have to, sometimes I have to push myself into it because it can be a, a difficult process and you're using a different part of your brain and you, you, you want to, you want to make something that really stands out. So that's kind of always in the back of one's head and, and it's not easy. Um, it is not easy to produce something that sort of pops out, um, I find. And um, I went through a, a period where I was doing kind of this kind of thing, laying out, laying out color pieces and making faces out of and then this one is kind of an example of the same sort of thing. Colored pages, papers that I lay out, in this case, palm trees. And, and then really take my time. As I saw them, pieces of cardboard and 
colored pieces of paper that I snipped out that were already painted. We have here, yeah, there's, there's Big Bob, the stick man I did in 03. It's one of the first stick men I ever pulled off. I was quite pleased with Big Bob. I, I painted it on a picnic table beside Big Bob Lake. And these are all odds and sods. Just getting to know who I was and what I could do. And this is like kind of the discovery of realizing I could do some um, high realism. Years of retouching photographs, um, I realized like 30 years of retouching photographs um, with a tiny little brush was training. Would I, would I change my, you know, my, the style or whatever to please? No, I, I could, I would not, could not, wouldn't make me happy. So I will continue, you know, making my, my Beckett style quirky because that's what I do. I, I can't, um, I, I wouldn't consider changing to make some other some other person happy uh, they're either happy with my you know back at work or or not so the coolest thing the most amazing thing that's happened in my life and thank god it did is my my daughter you know having one child in my life is and all that entails and watching her, you know, go from baby to 16 year old. Anyway, that's just been a, a massively lovely part of my life and um, gives me, gives me this added, well, it's a love story, you know, and it's just fantastic. So nice, these are the days, eh, when you had these beautiful large, large pieces of artwork you could look at and I listened to this first time in a record store in Switzerland in 1979 and I was happy to see that it was recorded in Switzerland lodger it's all about traveling and I was traveling for the first time backpacking so that was a cool album I can recall all those amazing songs Gregory Isaacs, Red Rose for Gregory, beautiful, huge influence. Saw Gregory when I went to Jamaica and kind of changed my life, introduced me to, there's Grace Baby. What else do we have? There's some talking heads. Oh, there's another Cohen, another Cohen. Look at Leonard here, I've always thought he looks a little too happy right here, don't you think? <laughs> I think that's Marianne with the words here. Da -da 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 to be an artist, do you have to be taught to be an artist? No, I do not think so. I think you're an artist. <sighs> apple juice. <laughs> Thank God for apple juice. <laughs> oh. I was different than a lot of people when I grew up. I was different. I was a Beckett. <laughs> What's a Beckett? Was once yelled through the campsites in Northern Ontario when, pe when my friends were looking for me. Where's Beckett? Have you seen Beckett? What's a Beckett?